title of the opening song of the movie is Yumetoro or Dream Lantern. But curiously, neither the words dream or a lantern appear at all in the lyrics of the song. They don't appear in the English translation, and the phrases Yume or Toro also don't appear at all in the Japanese translation either. So why is the title of the song Dream Lantern? In Makoto Shinkai's first feature length film, The Place Promised in Our Early Days, scientists in the movie propose an idea that perhaps the universe, just like humans, is capable of having dreams, and that these dreams manifest themselves as parallel universes and timelines. This is an entertaining hypothesis because dreams and parallel universes are similar in that they are both alternate forms of reality. But also, the theoretical nature of parallel worlds and the often incomprehensible nature of dreams allows them to both share a sort of mysticism that we often don't quite understand. And I believe Makoto Shinkai purposely utilizes this gray area of difficult understanding to tie the two concepts together. Twelve years after directing The Place Promised in Our Early Days, Shinkai revisits the same idea of entangling dreams and parallel worlds together in Kimi no na wa, because Taki and Mitsuha exist on two separate timelines which they visit in their dreams. Dreams are popular narrative devices because they represent a state of mind that is within our reality but, at the same time, is also quite different from our reality. This quasi-state of semi-reality often allows writers like Makoto Shinkai to use dreams as an in-between state between our reality and more otherworldly, supernatural, or spiritual forms of reality. It's the same reason why Twilight is also used so prominently in Kimi no Nawa. Twilight is an in-between state that is neither night nor day, and is thus another perfect metaphor for this intermediary through which we can touch upon and enter the spiritual world, while still being in the real world. Even the Japanese word used for twilight itself has a dimorphous state of being. In Japanese, twilight is written with these kanji and is pronounced as tasokare. But a more archaic kanji spelling of twilight would be like this, also pronounced tasokare. But instead of just being translated as twilight, this form of Tasukade can also be translated as, who is that? And this is especially interesting given Kimi no Nawa's central themes around names and identity, which might lead us to believe that Makoto Shinkai chose to use Twilight as a motif after studying older Japanese phrases, which also makes sense given the integral role history and traditions across time seem to play in Kimi no Nawa. In fact, it is believed that Twilight and who is that share a common spelling because during the onset of twilight, when light begins to fade into dusk, or conversely, when light is just beginning to emanate into dawn, during this transitional period, it might be difficult to make out the countenance of someone's face whose shape you might be able to make out but can't see entirely clearly. And so when it is difficult to recognize someone's face in twilight, you might ask, who is that? Another way to spell or write out who is that in Japanese is with these kanji, which can be pronounced as kawatare. And given Twilight's existing association with the question, who is that, it is from this variant kawatare that Makoto Shinkai introduces his own made up word for Twilight, katoware, spelled with hiragana instead of kanji because it's a made up word, and in the lore of the movie is explained as part of an archaic local Itamori dialect. It's interesting how a word can have two different identities, much like how Taki and Mitsuha share two different identities in the same body throughout the movie. It makes you think, what does the question, who are you, really mean? In Kimi no Nawa, there is certainly some sort of supernatural power at work that allows Taki and Mitsuha to switch places in their dreams. But I do enjoy the fact that this power is never given any name or form, and that its presence can only be felt in the naturally occurring mediums of dreams and twilight. It makes the film feel more believable, and also by keeping the details of these external supernatural forces to a minimum, it lends more weight to the actions and decisions of our characters. Because the focus of the movie shouldn't be on how magic time travel gods can save the day, but instead on the human connection between Taki and Mitsuha. Human. I personally think it is important that the more unintelligible, more intangible, inhuman forces of this movie should remain nameless. 
And when thinking about whoever or whatever is controlling these forces, asking the question, who are you, should have no clear answer. Clearly, in a movie titled Your Name, names will be important, but I think the precious qualities of names and identity should be reserved for the individuals who bear it. As for why I think that, I think it's important to investigate Makoto Shinkai's intimate relation with existential apprehensions about our place in the universe. Many of Makoto Shinkai's movies share an inquisitiveness about our place in the universe, or more particularly, our place within the dimensions that define our universe. And Shinkai uses the indefinite scale of these confines to symbolize the grandeur of his prose and the human experiences he wants to portray. Because what grander stage can we express our feelings on than all of space and time? The imagery of threads is inherent to space and time. Grandma Miyamizu says rather directly in the movie that the braided cords that we make are the god's art and represent the flow of time itself. And she's referring to the kumihimo threads mentioned at the beginning of this essay. Traditionally, we would think of time as flowing through a singular line. But if we think of multiple threads tying together like multiple timelines, of knotting together like musubi. Musubi, which translates as knot in Japanese, is a major theme of Kimi no Nawa. It is believed to derive from whatever powers that guide many of the events of the film, and is described by Grandma Miyamizu as, Musubi is the old way of calling the local guardian god. This word has profound meaning. Tying thread is musubi. Connecting people is musubi. The flow of time is musubi. These are all the god's power. They converge and take shape. They twist, tangle, sometimes unravel, break, then connect again. Musubi. Knotting. That's time. It is quite unclear as to what musubi actually means. Like, what the heck does it mean for something to be time? The words used to describe musubi are quite abstract, and I believe it is because Makoto Shinkai is intentional in wanting to evoke primarily an emotional response from the audience when thinking about musubi, rather than give a literal evaluation. It would probably be too difficult for Makoto Shinkai, Grandma Miyamizu, or anybody to concretely define what musubi actually is, and to do so might even lessen its power. Since, similar to the ambiguity of the opening and closing monologues, the vagueness of musubi allows the audience to fill in the unknown with their most personally affecting meaning. If I had to describe how I envision musubi, I believe musubi represents something grand in scope beyond our understanding, but it also represents how, on a fundamental level, people can be connected even if they are on different timelines, even if they are separated by the furthest reaches of space, there is still an underlying fragility since threads can still unravel and break. But even so, humans can still be connected on a fundamental level under even the most dire conditions through this perhaps spiritual bond that is represented by Musubi. And while it is difficult to explain what this bond actually is or how it works, maybe it represents the prevalence of emotions over parameters of the universe. Regardless of what it actually is, it does explain how, despite a preponderance of odds, Taki and Mitsuo are able to find each other at the end of the movie, because they were still connected by Musubi. But yes, Musubi are a core element in Kimi no Nawa's themes. They represent some greater meaning Makoto Shinkai wants to explore regarding the connection and separation and then possible reconnection of people. And it is also important to study the context of this meaning with respect to space and time. 